أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أتي الله أتي رسوله للأمر منكم and always a reminder for myself and abdul kulaji sadaif of miskeen uzan of jahal and but for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence. Alhamdulillah in these holy nights of Ashura and the realities of Muharram the foundation of which our existence and this door of, of marifa through the foundation of humility, its structure and everything that we built upon humility is good character. This good character with a strong foundation of humility becomes a Divine reality and that Divine reality dresses that which is humble and dresses that which has good characteristics. And the intercession and the gates of forgiveness that everything through the Divine the Presence is showing the immense amount of mercy that the year begins with repentance, the year begins with forgiveness and mercy. We described even like in Ramadan, first 10 days of Ramadan is a rahmah. It's only by means of that rahmah that we can enter into anything, we can achieve anything because Allah is granting a mercy, granting a, a forgiveness that no matter what you are, who you are, that enter into this gate of forgiveness to achieve God's grace and mercy. And when we reach to the understanding of forgiveness and all the Prophets asking for Divine forgiveness and the completion of prophecy, the completion of character, the completion and the highest reality that God wants mankind to achieve is to live a life of sacrifice in which we self-sacrifice is that we came to be generous, we sacrificed our time, we sacrificed our wealth, we sacrificed everything and when we get to the Muhammadan reality Prophet begins to describe and teach for us that we have to sacrifice ourself and that our submission and the perfection, perfection of our submission is the greatest achievement for mankind. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Means that what can we give back to Allah other than the property and goods and money that uh, all religions are stating and every entry into understanding of religion but the highest level because uh, the highest of the Prophets is coming to teach us that the highest level of submission, the highest level of achievement is to give back your will. Give back what Allah has given to you that distinguishes you from all other creation is that your will, your self-will, your will to think that you, you have a, a right to choose and, and, and right to, to contemplate, everything else is forced into submission. And the beauty of our creation is that we have a perceived free will. And this gate of humility and the reality of Prophet comes to teach the surrendering of the free will, that surrender, give back to Allah the dearest gift that you can give and that is your free will. When the servant understands that that's the gift that what God has given to me, 
gave money, gave time, doing all of these things. But when we come to the gate of Prophet as all the Prophets were asking for forgiveness, all of them have an eternal understanding and reality that we arrived here through Sayyidina Adam السلام, and we repent for all of what God has given to us, isma kullaha and we came to earth and forgot all these knowledges, all these realities. Sayyidina Nuh السلام, comes and teaches us that we have to repent and we have to struggle in God's way for our faith and our ship to be born and the, the, the rains and testing that come into life. Sayyidina Ibrahim comes and teaches us they're going to throw fire upon you, cast every type of difficulty to try to burn you and to make you a fiery angry person. This is the, the role of this world that you have to ask and seek God's forgiveness and God's mercy that you don't become narani and fiery. Sayyidina Musa comes and teaches that to run from this dunya, not trying to carry the wealth of dunya into your hereafter and that Allah has to save a nation from that desire, part the sea and leave a dunya reality to move towards the heavenly kingdom. Sayyidina Isa comes and teaches us now how to rise, that to lift oneself up and asking Allah's repentance of this mercy Ya Rabbi let me to rise to the heavenly kingdom, be inspired by your heavenly kingdom, be dressed and blessed by the heavenly kingdom and to arrive at the gate of Sayyidina Muhammad that begins to teach is then sacrifice your will, put yourself on the table, put yourself that Ya Rabbi I sacrifice my will, my will is not important and that your will should be done. The heavenly, will, the heavenly will, thy kingdom come and thy will shall be done. The will of Allah the will of the Almighty should be done upon the heart and one's perfection of surrender is surrendering that will. All the things we could have been, wanted to be, everything that what we had hoped for dunya, Allah asked then surrender all of that and make my will the will that governs your heart and that becomes a servant entering into the Divinely Kingdom in which the Kingdom of Allah radiates within their heart and with their being and within their soul. So that a continuous life of service as a result they pray that their will is continuously the will of God, that Allah inspire within them His Divinely will upon their being. And that becomes the, the door of Prophet the teaching that our way is to surrender ourself. Then the example of Ashura and the realities of Karbala is that whatever our faith is in life to face it. That Imam al Hussein as represents that whatever the faith that Allah has written is to have sabr and to be a symbol of Allah's sabr, that not the, the will of Allah is not something easy where you merely want something then you say, okay alhamdulillah that would be nice and if it comes, it comes. But the will of Allah is that when He wants to give you a gift, wants to give you an opening that's not easy to achieve and there's an immense amount of struggle, immense amount of of disappointment that it came, it didn't come, it's almost coming, the light coming, the struggling, the difficulty. Means Allah's way is a continuous way of, of struggle and Imam al Hussein salam comes to us and represents ayat as sabr that this will of Allah to sacrifice oneself, I'll sacrifice my bad character, I'll sacrifice using my tongue now to vindicate myself, to to praise myself, honour myself, everything and in every way we can see it in every aspect of our daily life. And that's what Imam al Hussein represents for us, not a historic event that what happened to the poor family in the desert and how people came and destroyed them. But at this angle for tonight is that how he knew what was going to be 
the fate of himself and his family. And that the immensity of character and courage that whatever the fate is, I'm relying upon Allah If that is what Allah wants for my fate, then my life is to face it and move into my fate. There is no escaping the fate of somebody. Although they may perceive they can escape what Allah wants for them, they run, they run, they run, eventually Allah catches them in a much more difficult way. But this, this representation of Ashura is the immensity of submission and taslim that what Allah wants for me, Ya Rabbi grant me sabr. I'm expecting nothing and I learn just to wait for what Allah wants, when Allah wanted. It will only happen when Allah wants it in Allah's time and no one else's. So it means then this is a, a life of continuous sabr, continuous carrying of difficulties because to have sabr you have to be patient through all the difficulties of when you expected something and it didn't come. And many people say that this stage in life many people when they don't get what they want they break away. They say, oh I'm not, I'm not going to do my practices, I'm not going to pray, I'm not going to do whatever, what I wanted didn't come. And that, that is completely the opposite of, of faith and a spiritual path, it's not about what I wanted. I should have put that at the door that I'm taking this path to submit my will. I know not, I know nothing Ya Rabbi. I know nothing of what I want and what I need and what's good for me, only you know. And whatever I used and thought was of no value. I put it at your threshold Ya Rabb and I'm entering into your kingdom asking that whatever your will is for me, guide me and let me to taslim and submit. And that becomes the understanding, only a humble person can think like that. Only a humble person can enact and implement that. That to say that my will doesn't count and that to submit myself into the oceans of submission and taslim. And taslima which is a beauty only opens by taslim, by submission. So the beatific character is when the servant has sabr and taslim and submits, Allah promised you something heavenly, Allah will give it to you but not in your time, in Allah's time. And the, that's our whole lives, shaykhs have seen things that would be coming to them and 20 years later it may come and the whole time they thought it's coming tomorrow. And when Allah promised Sayyidina Musa salam that go and take this kingdom from Pharaoh, take authority take my people out of Egypt. He went, uh, Pharaoh gave it to him and he went back to Allah said, so what happened? I thought that I was going to get uh, my people out and I would deal with Pharaoh and Allah kept telling Sayyidina Musa inshaAllah tomorrow. That inshaAllah tomorrow became 40 years of da'wah against Pharaoh and every time he would talk to Pharaoh, Pharaoh would become angry and torture his people. And we described many times his people begged him, don't talk to Pharaoh anymore. So every time you talk to Pharaoh, he kills us all and tortures and puts difficulty upon us, stop talking to him. And for 40 years Sayyidina Musa salam dealt with Pharaoh until Allah gave a permission that now take my people out of there to the Promised Land. So sabr of Allah and patience in Allah's way is, 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 is a beatific character. Imam al Husayn is representing for us that to have patience, have good character. Whatever our faith is in life we have to face it, you can't avoid yourself from what you think is going to be a difficulty. If you think that that's what Allah wants then having patience and facing whatever Allah wants for us 
then alhamdulillah that good character of sabr brings the beatific reality of Nabi Mustafa means the beatific lights of Prophet begin to dress the character, bless the character. Imam al-Husayn comes and reminds us, look that sacrifice how horrific, how difficult, how immensely difficult that was but what type of beatific light and reality was that, that till today and till the day of judgment humans on earth will remember that sacrifice, will we'll understand and, and, and commemorate that sacrifice to the day of judgment. And to today they say 7 to 14 million people occupy the fields of Karbala on Ashura and Arba'een, the 40th day of the events of Ashura. So it means 14 million people larger than Hajj gather on Arba'een to commemorate the sacrifice of a servant of Allah a grandson of Sayyidina Muhammad and, and that's, that's the greatest khutbah, that's the greatest gift, that's the greatest reality, that's the greatest futuhat and book and knowledge. Everybody leaves so many books, so many knowledges, so many realities. When Imam al Hussain leaves the actual physical example that I did with my life everything my beloved grandfather taught, I sacrificed myself for his nation, I sacrificed myself for sabr of Allah if what Allah has written for me I'm accepting it and fulfilling the command of Allah and as a result he left the greatest legacy on earth, the most immense legacy on earth that 14 million people every year commemorating and hundreds of millions of people commemorating around the world and understanding that sacrifice. We pray that Allah dress us from the immensity of its lights, the immensity of its blessings and from whatever we can do of bringing water, making a well, bringing food, giving food out around the world in, in India, in Kenya, in Kashmir, in Pakistan, Vancouver, Los Angeles, wherever that we can do, may Allah accept that and dress us from their light, dress us from their blessings, take shares in the barakah and the benefit and the immensity of what Allah is dressing Imam al Husayn as salam wa shuhadai Karbala as salam and all that they achieved that we to be raised under the shade of intercession of Imam al Husayn as salam on the day of Yawm al Mashar and the day of judgment and that every day of our life to be under his holy nazar, his blessings, his prayers and that he watch over our souls, our family and our children that we come through the door of love and that Prophet's promise is that you be with whom you love and the greatest, the greatest of those to love are the ones whom had the greatest amal and ajr and reward in Allah's way. That inshaAllah Allah keep us to always love those whom Allah loves and whom showed their love with their self, with their actions and with their deeds. And by keeping the love and the company of those loved ones Allah dress us and bless us and keep our soul always to be in their presence inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa basira Surat al-Fatiha.